solenoid. Now, first of all, we need to know what is a solenoid. Eh? A solenoid is a long coil made up of a number of turns of wire. So, uh, it's a wire, okay? Wire, uh, we wind it into a coil, okay? It's a series of coil. If just one coil, then, it's, it, then we say it's a flat coil, okay? But if we have more than one coil, okay? More than one coil like this, then it becomes a solenoid, okay? It becomes a solenoid. The field patterns, uh, the magnetic field patterns of uh, solenoid. Uh, let's see. Okay, now this one, uh, it shows the magnetic field patterns of the solenoid. And uh, this is the plan view. Okay, we see it from the top. Uh, we see it from the top and then it looks something like this. And uh, if we compare it with the magnetic field of a bar magnet, this is a bar magnet, uh, a permanent bar magnet, then uh, we will find that the field is uh, similar. Okay, the magnetic field is similar to the magnetic field of a bar magnet. Eh? That is a field patterns. Eh? There's a field patterns. Sometimes in the exam they may ask you to draw the field patterns. Eh? So make sure that you know how to draw the field patterns. So that is for solenoid. Eh? Okay, solenoid actually is uh, wire, made up of a few number of turns. Eh? So uh, as we discuss just now okay so it's a made out of few number of turns of wire and then uh, this is the field patterns and uh, these arrows show the directions of the current eh? okay okay directions of the current and the direction of the current is very important for us to find the directions of the field okay directions of the field now take notes that because the field is uh, similar to the field of a bar magnet so uh, usually in exam they would like you to uh, determine the north pole and the south pole of the uh, this is a magnetic field okay north pole and south pole eh? okay tell me okay from the magnetic field this one they already give you the field eh? okay if they already give you the field can you tell me uh, this side eh? okay on the this is the right hand side and here is the left hand side okay can you please tell me what's the pole at the right hand side north pole or south pole here on the right hand side is north pole or south pole north pole and uh that's correct okay that's correct this is a north pole now how do we know it's a north pole we know it's north pole is because the fuel line come out from this end we have learned that the magnetic field come out from the north pole and move into the south pole Okay, magnetic field eh, come out from the north pole, move into the south pole. Eh, okay, so here the magnetic field line come out from uh, this end. Eh, so therefore, this is a north pole and this is a south pole. But usually, they won't give you the magnetic field. Eh. They won't give you the magnetic field. If they don't give you the magnetic field, then you have then you have to use another methods to determine whether it's a north pole or south pole. We will discuss that later. Okay. Now there are a few things eh, that you need to know about the field patterns other than the North Pole and South Pole. Eh? Okay, first uh, you need to know that you see eh, the magnetic field inside the solenoid. Uh, inside the solenoid, here the lines are very close to each other, right? Okay, the lines are very close to each other. Means that the field is the strongest, eh? the strongest inside the solenoid. Eh? Another thing that you need to know is uh, the field line is almost parallel inside the solenoid. Yeah, almost parallel. And uh, therefore, we say the field is, uh, is a uniform field eh, inside uh, this solenoid. Okay? But when it comes out, then it's not uniform anymore. Eh? But inside here, uh, it's supposed that it's a uh, uniform. And as we discussed just now, okay, the field line is uh, similar to the the field pattern is similar to the field of uh, bar magnet, similar to the bar magnet. Uh, if you compare this and uh, and this, and uh, the the field come out from the north pole and then move into the south pole. How to determine the north pole and south pole? Eh? Now we can determine the north pole and south pole by using uh, right hand grip rules. Eh? But this right hand grip rule is different from the right hand grip rule that we discussed last week. Uh, we also discussed a right hand grip rules, uh, okay, right hand grip rules. And right hand grip rule is, is used to find the directions of the field of a straight wire. Uh, when we use right hand grip rule, uh, we say the thumb, the thumb, uh, 
represent the directions of the currents and the other fingers represent the directions of the field. That's the right hand grip rule that we use to determine the directions of the field of the straight wires. Eh? Okay, let me show you. Okay, so the thumb is the current, eh? the thumb is the currents, and the other finger shows the directions of the field. Uh, that is the right hand grip rule used to determine the directions of the field for a straight wire. But for solenoid, the right hand grip rules that we use it is different okay now these times we use the other finger as the current just now is the thumb is the current right but these times we use the other fingers shows the directions of the current eh? and the thumb show the directions of the field eh? because the field come out from the north pole eh? the field come out from the north pole and therefore the thumbed point okay the thumb eh? point to the north pole the directions where the thumb point eh, is the north pole. So when it thumb it point here means that the field come out from here, okay? Come out from here, and this is the north pole. This is the north pole. And here the field go inside, move into okay, this end here, and therefore it's a south pole. So that is the methods that we use to find the north pole or south pole. We use right hand grip rules. Eh? Okay, the four fingers shows the directions of the currents and the thumb show the directions of the field eh? and the field come out from north so therefore if it points to the left and the left hand side is the north and the right hand side is the south so that is the right hand grip rules eh? other than the right hand grip rules we have another method eh? we have another method to determine the the pole eh? so let's say this is solenoid eh? so this is solenoid and so you just try to imagine you see the solenoid from both end okay both end eh? okay so if you see from the left hand side okay then you will find that the currents uh, move this is a clockwise eh? it move like this right okay so it move clockwise so if it move clockwise then uh, we say it's a south pole if you, you try to imagine eh? you try to imagine you see from this end so if, if it's a clockwise then it's a south pole south pole and uh, if you see this uh, this solenoid from the right hand side, okay. So when you see here, then you will find that the currents move this way, and that is anti-clockwise, eh? anti-clockwise. And for anti-clockwise is north pole. For anti-clockwise is north pole. So clockwise south pole, anti-clockwise north pole. This is another method that you can use. Eh? To determine whether it's a south pole or north pole. Eh? Personally, I prefer the right hand grip rules. Eh? This one is easy. Okay, compared to this one, this one uh, there are you need to sometimes you need to memorize the clockwise south pole, anti-clockwise north pole. Eh? But anyway, just let you know that there's another method that you can use eh, to determine whether it's a south pole or north pole. Okay, now let's see this case first. Okay, let's see this case. Uh, how do we know it's north pole or south pole? Uh? First, you need to know the directions of the currents. Uh? Directions of the currents, and uh, the currents always flow from positive to negative. Uh? So this is a cell, and uh, the longer one is a positive, and the shorter one is a negative. And current always flow from uh, positive to negative. So the current flow down, go to the left. Okay, this is directions. Uh? This is the directions of the currents. Now after we know the directions of the current, then we use our right hand, okay? So this, let's say this is your right hand. So you try to imagine that you gripped, you gripped this is a solenoid, okay? So the other fingers shows the directions of the currents, okay? You see the current, you just, just imagine that you hold the solenoid. So then the currents move to the right, right, okay? So then the thumb, the thumb point, the, uh, the directions of the feel, right? And uh, the field come up from north, eh? okay. So therefore, if the thumb point upwards means that upward is the north. Eh? So this is a north, and uh, this is a south, okay. North and south, and that's how we determine eh, whether it's north or south. So let's see the second case, eh? B. First, we determine the directions of the currents, eh? okay. Positive, negative. So we go up. So we use this one, okay? Just just imagine that you gripped. Okay, just imagine that we gripped. So this solenoid. So the thumb points downwards. Eh? It points downwards. So therefore, uh, downward is the north. 
and uh, upward is the south. Uh, for C, so this is a positive and this is a negative. So go down. Just imagine you're using the right hand. Okay, so imagine that the currents go this way. So therefore, uh, this is a North Pole and uh, this is a South Pole. Okay, so this is the answer for uh, B and C. Uh, okay, so this one positive, this is negative. So the currents go... So this, this is our hand. Okay, so just imagine that huh? this is your hand. So you gripped, you gripped, put it here, okay. So you grip the solenoid. So the currents, huh? you hold it and the currents come down. And uh, therefore, this is a North Pole and this is a South Pole. Eh? Okay, so this is a North Pole and uh, this is a South Pole here. And for E, okay, positive, negative. So currents go up. Okay, so this is my hand here. Okay, so imagine that you grip the solenoid like this. And uh, therefore, this is the North Pole and this is the South Pole. Okay, and uh, this is positive, this is negative, and uh, this is the current. Okay, so for this one, okay, it's still the same. Huh? So this is the North Pole and this is the South Pole. Okay, so that's the answer. The strength of the magnetic field eh, formed by solenoid. So the strength of magnetic field can be increased by increasing the currents. Use a stronger currents. This one should be no problems, right? Uh, increasing the number of turns per unit length. Okay, for example, so, um, for example, so if this is a solenoid, this one is the first one, the first solenoid. Uh, if this is the case, uh, okay, same length, same length, but this one uh, has more turns, more wires uh, compared to this one. Uh, then this one is a, this one is stronger. This one will create a strong stronger feel. Okay, compared to this one. Eh? Increase currents or increase the number of turns per unit length of the solenoid. Okay. The last one is uh, using a soft iron core within the solenoid. Okay, now you can see that, I, that there's a bar here, right? Uh, this is the iron core, eh? iron core. So if you insert an iron core inside this solenoid, then the solenoid will make this iron core eh? a, a, a magnet. Now then, there are two magnets. The solenoid is a magnet and the iron core is a magnet and the magnetic field of these two magnets combines together, it will make uh, the field become very strong. Okay, so out of these three, the iron core is the most important factors that affect uh, the strength of the field. The strength of the field. Eh? But here, you can see that they, they say soft iron core. Eh? Okay, why they say soft iron core? Why don't they just say iron core? Eh? Why? It must be a soft iron core, okay? Now, first of all, we need to know what does it mean by soft iron, eh? soft iron. Now, soft iron is a pure iron, eh? it's a pure iron. But if you add some impurities inside iron, for example, if you add carbon inside irons, then the iron will become hard, like steel. Eh? Steel. Steel is an alloy of iron and it's very hard. That is called hard iron. So the difference between soft iron and hard iron is that soft iron is a pure iron and hard iron is the ions with uh, carbon inside. Usually it's carbon inside, yeah? it's the alloy, okay? And uh, for the core, you must use soft iron if you want to make electromagnet. Eh? It must be soft iron, you cannot use hard iron. Why? Because soft iron can be magnetized and demagnetized easily. Okay, soft iron, it can be magnetized uh, and demagnetized easily. Okay, means that if you have a solenoid and you have an iron core inside the solenoid, yeah? if you're on the switch when current flow, then it become a magnet. Okay, it become a magnet. 
uh, means it magnetize, uh, it magnetize the iron core, okay? But if you off the current, if you off the currents, the magnetic field will cease, yeah? It will disappear, and then means that it is demagnetized. So there's a current flow, then the, bar, the, the, the soft iron become magnet, and if there's no current flow, then the soft iron will go back to a normal soft iron without uh, any, uh, this is a magnetic uh, properties, okay? So it can be magnetized and demagnetized easily. Current flow, it become magnet. No current flow, then it just then it become a non-magnet. Eh? Okay, that's soft iron. Eh? But for hard irons, for hard iron, it is difficult to be magnetized. It's hard to be magnetized. Eh? Hard to be magnetized means that if if you on the switch, eh, when it's the current flow, it will not become the magnet immediately. It will slowly and slowly and slowly uh, become a magnet. Eh? It become a stronger and stronger and stronger magnet. It take time, and it take very long time actually. It take a few hours, eh? slowly and slowly and slowly, and become a strong magnet. Eh? But it's also hard to be demagnetized. Eh? Hard to be demagnetized means that if you off the switch. If you off the switch, eh, it will still a magnet. Okay, it's not like the soft iron core. If you off the switch, no current flow, then it, then you become a non-magnet. Eh? But for hard irons, if you off the currents, eh, it will still a magnet. And this magnet, it, it become an almost a permanent magnet. It can last even for a uh, month and years. Eh? Okay, month and years. Unless you go to heat it, you heat it, then so uh, then it will be demagnetized. Eh? Okay, if you do not heat it, you leave it there. Okay. The magnetic uh, characteristics, uh, okay, can last for even a, a few months or a few years, uh, okay. So that's the difference between the soft iron and hard iron. Soft irons easy to be magnetized and demagnetized, and therefore uh, is suitable to be used in electromagnet. Hard iron is hard to be magnetized. It's also hard to be demagnetized, and therefore is suitable to make permanent magnet. Okay, soft irons. Is suitable to make electromagnet. Hard iron is suitable to make permanent magnet. Okay, so that's the difference between soft iron and hard iron. Eh? Uh, how an electromagnet can be produced? Okay, how to make an electromagnet? Eh? So an electromagnet can be produced when there is electric current flow in the conductor. That's all. Okay, it's very easy, right? So electromagnet is the magnet where uh, when there's a current flow in the conductor. Uh, this is this the second question? Okay, why soft iron but not hard iron is used as a core of an electromagnet? Why? Because soft iron can be magnetized and demagnetized easily, and hard iron will turn into permanent magnet once it is magnetized. Eh? Okay, that's why we use soft iron but not core, uh, hard iron as a core eh, of an electromagnet. 